All right. All right. Well, here we go. Tom Campbell's going to pick some numbers and he's going to let us know what's up. Ready, set, go. <laughs> pick a number through one through 11. One through 11? Um, 11. <laughs> Why are we so fearful of the unknown? Well, we're fearful of the unknown because we want to be able to control our world. We have this sense of wanting to be in control. We want to make sure that things happen the way we want them to happen. So when there's unknowns, we don't know how they're going to happen. We don't know what it's going to do. We, you know, and it, that worries us because what if it were bad? What if it was a problem? What if we couldn't understand it? What if we fail at whatever it is? You know, uh, we have all these misgivings about things that we don't know just because we don't know them. So we want to control and we want to succeed. And the unknown is unknown. We don't know whether we're you know, going to like it or not like it or succeed or fail. And that makes us a little skittish to go there. It makes us a little uncertain and a little uneasy when we venture into the unknown. And the only uh, way to counter that is just with courage. You have to say that, let's just jump into that unknown and see what happens. And if we have to scamper back out, well, okay, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. If we you know, can deal with it, we'll do that. If we can learn from it, we'll do that. And we don't know, but whatever it is, we can handle it. We can deal with it, even if the way we handle it is to retreat, you know, and go back to where we were. But you, it takes courage to do that, and courage usually comes with confidence. If we're very confident people, then we just do things. We can march on into the unknown and deal with it when we get there. But if we're not confident, if we're insecure, if we don't really have a positive attitudes toward ourself, you know, if we don't really like ourselves, if we think we're inadequate, we're not good enough, uh, we don't have much to offer, that sort of thing, then the unknown frightens us because we're not sure we can, we can deal with it or that it'll be good to deal with. So that is a big problem that a, a lot of people have. You know, that, the fear of death is another big fear, but a lot of the fear of death is just the fear of the unknown don't know what's going to happen. So you don't want to go there because it might not be good. You know, it's a, so the, the fear of the unknown is one of the most fundamental fears that, that people have. But if you have the courage, that also means you have confidence. And if you generally like yourself and feel good about yourself, you usually have confidence. It's when you have negative feelings towards yourself and your abilities, that's when you know, you lack the confidence, you feel insecure, and then the unknown is scary. So, you know, the way you, you know, the way you deal with that problem is the same way you deal with every problem. You find the fears and get rid of them. You start uh, growing up and, and uh, you have to like who you are. You know, you have to be at ease with who you are. You have to accept who you are. And you don't have to be perfect. That's not the point. You know, you don't have to be perfect. That's, that's good to hear, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, being perfect is not the point. You are whoever you are right now at this moment, whatever that is. But now what you're supposed to do is go forward, learn. And that doesn't mean that you will never make a mistake. You'll make a lot of mistakes. You'll probably make more mistakes. Then, then you'll get things right because you know that's the way it is with learning. You know, when you first learn something, you make a lot of mistakes. So, sure, you'll make mistakes. You'll do things wrong. It'll cause problems. You know, then you'll get regret. You know, relationships will have a hiccup, and and uh, that's just gives you a challenge to see how could I have done that better? How could I have said that better? How could I approach that better? You know, where what could I do? to make that work better next time I get there. And then you think about that and then you try to do it next time. And maybe you'll fail again. 
And then you, oh, no, you know, got me again. And then you'll try again. And you just keep doing that until eventually you master it. And you've got it. And you will eventually master it if you really are sincerely trying to. So getting it wrong is not a problem. Getting it wrong is an opportunity, an opportunity to understand it a little better, to appreciate it, to, uh, uh, you know, go try again challenge. So don't ever be afraid of making a mistake or getting it wrong. That's okay. See, if you accept yourself, it's just I am who I am, warts and all, you know, fears and all, it's just the way I am. And that's okay. I'm going to go forward with that part. I'm going to try to do well, try to have good relationships. I try to be kind to people. I'll try to be helpful. But you find yourself being egotistical and you find yourself being controlling and manipulating and all the other things. And then you catch yourself and say, oh, I don't want to be that way. So you try again. So it's not that you beat yourself up. Oh, I, I'm so awful that I can't do this. No, you're just learning. And learning takes a lot of trial and error. And, uh, you've been through a lot of that show where you've, uh, you've understood that there's a problem but you didn't actually really understand the problem real well, but you try to solve it anyway, but it didn't quite work. So you try to solve it again and that didn't work either, but you tried to solve it again and eventually you got it and it started to work. And then, you know, you're through it. Now you're a different person. And that's just the way life is. So one of the things that'll give you courage to kind of grasp the unknown is that whatever it is, you will deal with it the best you can, and you're going to learn from it. And if you deal with it poorly, well, you'll get poor results, and then you'll have a challenge to learn something. So you get to deal with it again until you deal with it well. But not to be afraid of not doing it right or afraid that you aren't quite up to it or that sort of thing. Just do it and see what happens and learn and go on. You see, so there's no penalty for doing it wrong. You keep doing it wrong until you figure it out. That's what everybody does. You know, there's nobody just starts life and then always does the right thing all the time. That doesn't happen. You know, you start life, you, you know, you grow up in a family and that family gives you attitudes and it gives you feelings and gives you anger sometimes. And, and the world does that too. You know, you, you on the internet, you talk to friends and you have all that stuff in there and that's just you. Now, you know, move on into the unknown, into the challenges, and embrace it with the knowing that, you know, succeed or fail isn't the point. The point is to learn from it if you fail. That's the whole key. So it's always positive. Even when you do it wrong, it's positive because you learn something from it. So if it's always going to be positive, then What's there to be afraid of? Nothing. Great point. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I, 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 I did that a lot and I made a lot of mistakes, but I started seeing every time I made the same mistake, I could tell myself, now, wait a minute. This is what I'm working on and be easy mm -hmm. on myself. This is what I'm working on. Look, it was a little better than last time, <laughs> you know, and, mm -hmm. and then I noticed it was presenting to me what I needed to see at that point in time to work through that problem of whatever fear that was around. And then once I got kind of to the other side of it, it, I would see it again another couple of times and then I would succeed. That was the best feeling ever mm -hmm. when I finally got one of them and it was just, this actually works. You can get rid <laughs> of your fears and you can move on, move to the other mm -hmm. side of it. It really yeah. does work. Just and, and not get, you know, disappointed if the same exact thing presents itself again it's like hey another opportunity to deal with this yeah. one and i don't want to be like that and i feel that i'm not not feeling real happy about this scene right now but <laughs> but and and then and then and now when i see the same scene or kind of i just sort of laugh at it now it's like yep there it is huh? and you're mm -hmm. almost gone too goodbye <laughs> <laughs> yeah well one of the ways we can tell that we have something to learn is if we feel negative. If we ever have a negative feeling, if you ever feel sad or upset or anxious or 
you know, hurt, angry, you know, any of those things that we'll say that are negative. If, if you feel anything negative, that tells you you've got something to learn. Because if you really were, you know, all about love, then you wouldn't have any negative feelings. You'd be impossible for somebody to make you angry or for you to get upset. It just wouldn't happen because that's not the way you would interpret things. You'd realize it wasn't about you. It was about them and that they're unhappy and they're not feeling good. And then you'd have compassion for them rather than getting angry at what, what they told you or said to you. So that's one thing to think about. If you ever have a, a negative feeling, then that's a pointer that there's something there for you to learn, something for you to outgrow. And shoot, most everybody has negative feelings, you know, every day, things that upset us and annoy us and aggravate us and that sort of thing. And that's all opportunities. But just pick one and work at it. Don't pick them all. You know, if you have a, a whole day full of negativity, you know, don't say, oh, no, I'm lost. Yeah. yeah, there's no way I'll ever get through this. You know, my whole day I'm angry and upset and, and unhappy. Well, just pick out one, pick out one thing and work on that. Yes. And when you see that you can do it and you got that fixed, then pick out another one and another one. Don't be overwhelmed by the by that fact. You know, I I've talked to a lot of people and, and uh, often I'll hear from particularly young males something like this. They say, well, I don't have any fears that I know of, and I don't think I really have much ego either. And so I don't know that I, I just can't think what it is I need to do because, you know, with no fear, no egos, I guess I'm already yeah. there. And then I tell them to go think about it for a while and look at the negativity. And I hear from them a month or two later, and it's just the opposite. They say, I found out that that's all I do have is fear <laughs> and ego. My whole life is full of fear and ego. Everything I do, all my interactions with everybody are based on my fears and my ego. So they go from not having any of that stuff to being totally overwhelmed by it. And that's the way it is for most people. So if you're full of fear and ego, well, you're just normal. You're, you're just like most everybody else. So don't take it as a problem or a failure. Just take it as it's the way it is. It's the way we are. And the point is to outgrow it, yes. not just to stay that way. And then your life is happy. You know, when you outgrow those things, then your life is full of positive things. People don't make you angry, even if they say things that are that are you know, that would have made you angry before. They don't make you angry anymore because you see it from a different perspective. That's all we're doing really in growing up is we're changing our perspective, reinterpreting life and people and things we reinterpret in a new way that's positive. It's learning how to be positive. That's another way of saying growing up. Being positive. And we love being around positive people because they're positive. Right. <laughs> that was one area that I really worked on too was, you know, is <clears throat> getting to win every single time you feel that negative emotion. And I train myself because when you first get upset, it kind of takes your focus away a little bit because you did now you're in the mad, right? Mm -hmm. And then I taught myself to be able to ask myself a question when it would happen. And I would say, well, exactly why, Cheryl, are you upset? <laughs> and, and then I would ask that question. If then I didn't get the answer I could understand, I'd ask it again. Why? Mm -hmm. Why am I upset right now? And I would keep going until I found what it was and then I say like, oh okay it's that fear again okay need to work on that one <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah our first our first uh, thing that we do when we feel negative is to blame somebody else you know why are you upset <laughs> oh I'm upset because you know he he, yeah he just did that <laughs> he said that that's why I'm upset Any, anybody would be upset if the you know if they heard that <laughs> wouldn't that make you mad <laughs> <laughs> right yeah there's something wrong with you that doesn't make you angry <laughs> So we justify it and we blame it on somebody else, but that's not how it works. You get upset and you get angry. You feel negative because of what's inside of you, not what anybody else does. You know, other people cannot make you angry. You choose to be angry. That's an inside job. That's an yeah, inside it's an inside job. job. Exactly. 
That's exactly right. It's an inside job always. Mm -hmm. you know, so instead of blaming it and you say, well, I got angry because he said that, you know, I failed in my you know, ability to do this. And that upsets me because I thought I did it pretty well. But then you say, well, why is his opinion that you failed? Why does that upset you? Well, because it isn't true. Well, why the fact that he says that and it's not true? Why does that upset you? And it's because because I feel I did better and it's not fair. <laughs> you know, and you just keep working at it until eventually you say, oh, it's because I'm really insecure. And when somebody criticizes me, it just resonates with that insecurity and I get angry. That's my response to somebody, you know, triggering my insecurity, my lack of, of feeling adequate and good. You know, it's... Uh, and then when that person criticizes you, instead of being upset about it and angry, you say, oh, really? Why do you think that? You know, why do you think that's wrong? Oh, I see. You misunderstood such and such. I didn't mean that. Well, maybe I, I could have written that more clearly so that people wouldn't, uh, you know, make that mistake. And then you learn from it. You interact with it. Without anger, you can actually solve the problem. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. When you have that anger, you can't solve the problem. All, all you do is make it worse. Yeah, that's for sure. Fuel to the fire. <laughs> yeah. Pour some gas on it. <laughs> yeah. Blow on it some. Blow on it some. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Okay. Pick another number. Okay. Um, seven. <laughs> Why does the larger consciousness system have such a funny sense of humor? <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does have a good, it does have a good sense of humor. Sure well, is. you know, a couple of reasons. One, it interacts with us in a way to help us grow, to help us understand, to help us um, see, you know, the, the errors that, that, we're, that we're doing and the problems that we're creating. And if it does that with humor, well, then it keeps you smiling and it is, it's easier to take when it's humorous. So it does like humor and it likes it as a teaching tool where it uh, you know, faces you. Sometimes you just, it takes a problem you have and it just pushes it right in your face. <laughs> you know? And blows uh, it up real big into a yeah. big giant balloon. Yeah, blows <laughs> it up, you know. Right past you. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, it does things like that. And <laughs> if you have a good sense of humor, then you kind of look at it and go, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. That, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aww. it does that. It does that a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it does. It likes to nudge you with humor. But it also kind of makes your learning fun. Mm -hmm. It makes you it makes the learning a little more fun if you if there's humor in it. And sometimes you can get people's attention with humor and they'll pay attention to it and learn from it. Whereas if you tried to sit down and give them a serious <laughs> conversation, now you know you've been a bad girl and you shouldn't <laughs> do that, you know, then you kind of resent that and you push it away and it's harder. But if it does something that makes it sound silly or makes you sound silly or whatever, well, you can laugh at it and you go, oops, yeah, okay. I resemble that, you know, that <laughs> joke. Yeah. Part. Yeah. And it's easier to see that way, but you know, the system does things all the time just for humor. Yes. It does. Boy, I've had some doozies where I couldn't even function anymore. I had to go sit down and laugh. I couldn't even. <laughs> and, and what was so funny to me is that the, if it happened any other way or any other situation, mm -hmm. it would not have been near as funny. But it, would, it was only really that funny to me because of my experience and where I'm at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've had a lot of those. That's why. Hence the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, humor is always better than pushiness. You know, if, if, if somebody's trying to teach you something and they're pushing the lesson at you, that doesn't work very well. It's not a good method. You know, somebody comes up and she says, Cheryl, you have a problem. Let me, <laughs> let me explain it to you. You know, 
already you're like mm, back off you know right. yeah you, you you immediately want to push back and you immediately want to to uh, feel negative about that because they're pushing something at you so humor is a good way so it just found out oh cheryl's a glutton for this one we'll just keep we'll just pour <laughs> the humor on thick and she'll do it <laughs> she'll mm -hmm. figure it out Pick a number. Three. Why does love feel so good? <laughs> Why does love feel so good? That's because love is about giving. Okay? Love is about what you can do for somebody else. It's about giving, how you feel about somebody else. And it's, it's always positive. What can I do? How can I help? And then you do something good for somebody or you help someone and they really appreciate it. And that makes you feel good. And even if they don't really appreciate it, you know that it's going to help them sometime. They'll, they'll get it maybe later. And even if you are good to them and do these things for them for a long time, one day they're going to grow up and they're going to look back and they're going to say, oh, that was really helpful. Yeah, you know, Cheryl was really, really nice to me. She really helped me out when I was grouchy and I was pigheaded and whatever. And I was so full of my own fear, my own ego that I couldn't understand anything. But she's really a good person. So it, even if you don't get immediate feedback, it feels good just to be nice, just to be helpful, just to care. And love is not something you give with the expectation of getting something back. If you expect to get something back, that's not love. That's a deal. That's a bargain of some sort. You know, I'll do this if you do that. Yeah. And that's not love at all. That's that's your ego and that's you being manipulative. Yeah. Love is something you give. You just give it away. And if nothing comes back, that's okay. If something comes back, that's okay. But it's not for what you're going to get back. It's for what you want to give. You just want to be nice you want to make that other person feel good you know you want to do something nice help them get over some ego problem that they're having and love is a is a positive thing it's always positive and positivity is always feels good so it doesn't always you know produce something that comes back but mostly it does mostly when you push love out there when when love is what you're radiating love is what you get back yes. you do get a lot of it back but only if you don't really push it out there to get it back you push it out there because right. you want to push it out there right. if you are pushing it out there because you want to get something back well what you usually get is frustration you, expect, you have you, expectation in it because you have expectations you're pushing and now they have to do a certain thing, thing. or you'll get upset if they don't <laughs> you see? and yeah so you just you're just nice and whatever happens happens but 90 percent of the time that that whatever happens happens is really something nice it comes back to you so you get many fold over things good coming back to you when you start giving to other people, you know, without uh, any conditions. Unconditional love is the only kind of love there is. If it's conditional love, it's not love. It's a it's a manipulation. It's a, a you know a deal, a bargain that you're that you're trying to negotiate with somebody. So, love is always positive and always makes you feel good. And it's just a way to live. It's just a way to live your life. You know, some people have an attitude that what they what they look for in life is what's wrong. So if you if they if you were to talk to them, what they do is is look for what's wrong in what you say. They look for what's wrong in the world, what's wrong on the internet, what's wrong, you know, in this organization or that or with me or my family. And they constantly focus on what's wrong. What's what's the problem? What what isn't right? Yeah. And if you focus on everything that's wrong, then what you do, you're constantly complaining. Oh, that isn't right. Oh, that isn't right. You shouldn't do that. And you're constantly complaining and you're constantly telling other people what they need to do. 
And what that does is it makes people not want to be around you. <laughs> you know? They don't like you very much They because you're always negative. You're all about wrong. But if you're always positive, you get just the opposite thing. If you're always positive and you always have a compliment, not a complaint, and you always have something good to say, you know, not telling people what they need to do, but just being positive and giving them support with whatever it is they do, then those people want to be around you and they'll care about you and they'll yeah. feel closer to you and they'll want to do nice things for you just because they like you. Yeah. So love creates more love. You know, the more positive you are, the more positive your, your environment is, the people you interact with, the more positive they are. Sometimes you run into people that are just so negative that they can't get outside of themselves. They're just so trapped by their own fear and their own negativity. And the way they make themselves feel better about themselves is taking on the superior air of I know, and I can tell you how you should be because I know, you see. So they pretend to be superior because they really feel inferior. And if they didn't feel inferior, they wouldn't have to pretend to be superior. You see, so that's when people have that arrogant, uh, you know, attitude, it's usually because they feel just a little teeny inside. They're not very confident. They don't feel real good about themselves. And that's how they're dealing with it is by, you know, telling everybody else how wrong they are, because every time they put somebody else down, it makes them feel better. Oh, I knew better than that. You know, I knew how I knew what was the right thing to do. And I'm really being helpful to a lot of people. <laughs> not yeah, they're, they're not really being oh. helpful to anybody. They're dragging everybody around them down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're dragging them down into the same space, because then other people get angry. And now you're just creating negativity wherever you go, rather than creating love wherever you go. You see, so the world will reflect you back to you. So when you're pleasant and you're nice and you're positive, then the world will reflect all that good stuff back to you Absolutely. and your life will be so much better. And if you're complaining and telling other people what they ought to be doing, then the world will reflect that back to you. Exactly. You know, you just are going to live always in a in a. Uh, you know, in a situation where you're struggling, 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 unhappy, miserable, uh, a soap opera, you know, you're going to be in a soap opera where every, you know, your whole life is the struggle of I want and they want, and we're struggling between, you know, what, what you want and what they want. And life is just this fight to get what you want. Well, that's because you're coming with ego. It's all about what you want, not about what you can give. That's the problem. Right. And if you're a gimme, 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 <laughs> I is. want, I want, I want. There well, there then there, there it is. There that's, it what is. You, <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. You're going to get that same thing back. And everybody's going to say, no, 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 I'm not no, giving no, you no. what you want. You give me what I want. And then the people just are constantly negative with each other. And Sometimes that's a hard thing to turn around. They get so used to being negative with each other that it's just part of part of their life. And they don't even realize they're being negative all the time. And they're always complaining. Oh, no. You know, they, they think sometimes they're being helpful, <laughs> telling everybody what they should do and how they should do it. You know, right. they're being really helpful to people. And they don't uh, see that uh, it's not helpful. You know, that that's that's arrogance that I know what everybody should be doing and how they should be doing it. And I'm being helpful by telling them you know, that that's yeah. not helpful, that you have to let you have to let people grow up, even if it is true, even if you do know best what's best for everybody and what everybody should be doing, even if you do know that yes. telling them is not helpful. Nope. You see, you have to let them grow up in their own way, in their own space, and they will they will learn how to grow up in a positive space a hundred times faster than they'll learn to grow up in a negative space. So if you keep complaining about what they're doing and how they're doing it, you create a negative space that makes it almost impossible for them to outgrow, to see what's going on. Whereas if you 
work in a positive space and don't push at them and tell them what to do and how to do it, then they'll make mistakes. They may do it wrong because you didn't tell them how to do it right. But if that's the case, then they'll learn from it. Yeah. Let them do it wrong. Yeah. Let them be however they are, you know, and if they do do it wrong, you don't go, aha, I told you so. You just <laughs> give them a hug and say, well, okay, sometimes that happens, you know, you'll do better next time. They are where and, they are. Yeah, they are where they are and they have to be who they are. Yes. And you don't fix people by telling them how they should be. All you do is annoy them. You, yeah, but you they don't. Just no. planting the seed, just the seed at a time. Yeah, leave exactly. It and leave it alone. And it may take a year before that seed, you know, takes root and starts to grow. But it has to take whatever time it takes. So you just have to be positive. And if it takes a year, then give it a year. And at least in a year, then you have solve the problem. They become positive, too. <laughs> and then it's so much better. You know, relationships work out so much better. So that's it. You, you know, what do they say? You, you uh, reap what you sow, right? So if you sow negativity, you get negativity. You sow love, you get love. And if you sow love and get negativity, well, that's all right. That person's just having a hard time, you know, give them a, give them a hug, be as positive as you can, and they'll probably feel better later on. So you don't have to, it's not, I'll be positive because I want positive to come back to me. That's the wrong reason. You have to be positive just because you are positive. Yes. Yeah, we're not talking about acting here, right? We're not talking about you need to act better and you need to, you know, act less arrogant and act less pushy. Acting is not what we're after. We're after being. You have to be less pushy and be more positive because if you're just acting, they'll know it. Yep. Before you know it. <laughs> yep. You won't even realize you're just acting, but the other person knows that and it doesn't work. And being kind is nicer for everybody around you, but it doesn't really help you grow up any. Being kind is just as nice for everybody around you, but you also get to grow up and change and become different. Because if you act, you eventually make yourself negative because you resent, you know, I'm acting. I always do everything and I always clean up all the dishes and I do this and I do that. And I, you know, I give and I give and I give and nobody gives me anything, you know, pretty soon you get resentful because you're acting kind and nobody's passing kindness back to you because everybody knows you're acting yeah. because you do it, but you complain as you do it. All right, I'll do this for you, but I'll complain about it and let you know that I'm doing this for you, you know, and I'll, I'll make that like a debt you owe me. And if you have that attitude, then people will let you do it, but they're not going to be positive towards you because you're not really being positive toward them. You're just acting positive. So for those people who feel like, oh, I give all the time. That's all I do is I give, 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 and I don't get anything. And I'm angry about that. And I feel bad about that. And I'm abused and I'm used and cast aside. And, you know, well, that's you wallowing in self-pity, being the victim. And that's, like, and that's like the worst place you can possibly be is to be a victim. There's no yeah. way out of that. You're it's hard. Out. Yeah, it's hard to get out. You know, once you've convinced yourself that you're a victim, everything is negative. Everything you see is negative, and you feel like there's nothing you can do to change it because you're right. the victim. When you're a victim, you don't have any power None. at all. You're just a victim, and the, the big bad world is just chewing you up and spitting you out any way it wants to, and there's nothing that you can do about it. That's the victim mentality. And yeah, that's a hard place to get out of because you have to stop being a victim before you can do something about you know, your situation. As long as you're a victim, the situation's just going to stay that way. So being, being a victim is probably the worst possible state to be in. 
where you feel sorry for yourself, you're full of self pity because you're a victim. I'm a victim, and then then the, then the system just reflect that right back to you, and then you're more <laughs> of a victim, and then there you are. <laughs> yeah, it just it just doesn't get much better when you hit that when you hit bottom to, to victimhood. But there's an awful lot of victims out there, you know, a lot of martyrs out there, and a lot of victims <laughs> out there who, even though they will do things for you, you know, they resent having to do things for you. And you're like. No, thank you. I don't need anything. No, thank you. Yeah, right. There's always strings attached and things like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's that's people acting. You know, right. they're not really being kind. They're acting kind so that they will get kindness back. They want kindness, mm -hmm. but they haven't gotten to the point that they can give kindness. Right. So the way to get around that is to act kind, pretend you have kindness, and then you expect it back. But everybody knows when somebody else is pretending. <laughs> it's just yeah. not that hard. It's not hard to see through that. No. It's not that hard to see that, okay, so and so is doing this, but they're doing it through clenched teeth. They're doing it and don't like it. They're not saying anything, but you can tell they're real negative about it. And basically, you just walk away and leave them alone because they're negative about it. You don't want to say anything because then they'll start, you know, spewing out a lot of negativity. So people just ignore them and let them be. Whereas if they were real positive about it, you might say, oh, can I help? And you'd go in and you'd talk to them and you'd be helpful and you'd do it together. Yeah. But if they're sitting there being, you know, <laughs> and you don't want to be around them. You just leave them alone. So they chase everybody away. Instead of drawing kindness to themselves, they chase everybody away. Who otherwise might be kind to them if they were really sincere. So see, that's it. It's how we... We create our own problems. Yes. You know, it's not blaming other people. It's us. You know, if you're not happy, if you're not positive, it's not because the world is against you. It's because it's that's the way you're interpreting the world. The world just is, however it is. And you just have to deal with that yeah. because there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and if you deal with it positively, then you optimize it. But don't some people need to, like, you know, that thing, well, to be a kinder person, kind of fake it till you make it thing? Well, you're sometimes. You're not a kind person. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be authentic, too. So what do you do with that? Yeah, well, the fake it till you make it is the idea that you lead with your intellect, even though the being level hasn't gotten there yet. Okay, I want to be kind, yes. but I really don't. I'm really not kind yet. You know, I do <laughs> things for my ego. I do things because it makes me feel good about me. And it's not that I want to give to people. I want people to be nice to me, so I, I act nice to them, so they'll act nice to me. Now, you can feel that way. But if you realize, well, I'd really like to just be kind, not just act kind. Really, just be kind. So kindness is just the way I am, not a way I behave. Well, in that case, you say, well, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to try to be kind always. Now you're acting. You're faking it until you make it. Right. But you have to constantly have this intent to be that way, not just to act that way. If you settle for acting, then you won't, like you won't, yeah, you won't be kind. And eventually you'll get, uh, like I say, you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, tired of it. You'll figure, well, I, you know, I, I'm not getting back what I'm giving out. You know, I'm being abused. And then you'll go down that channel and into that sinkhole of self-pity. And why be nice? Yeah, why Nobody be nice? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody's being nice to me. <laughs> right. So that's yeah, that's the way it works. You know, in a way, it's real simple, right? All your problems are inside of you, and you can solve them. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, if you had to fix the world, that'd be hard. Uh, I know. How do you go out and fix somebody else? I know. Can't you fix yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. Huh, that'd fix be you. hard. I can't fix me, but I'm going to fix yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So the good news is it's all inside you. Yeah, it's an inside job, and you, yep. you just uh, have to fix yourself. So, and you can fix yourself. Mm -hmm. So all of that negativity is fixable. Your life can be full of joy and peace and happiness and good relationships. And all you have to do is change who you are. And not act the role, but change who you are. And that's not easy, though, is it, Cheryl? No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not easy. 
it's not um, but you have to really want to that's the key because we we spend so much time in our in our image that we confuse our image with ourselves and <laughs> the best way to the best way to ask is somebody else you know if you feel like you've grown up and you've really changed go out and ask somebody else you interact with all the time if you notice any changes in me and see what they say because for them it's a lot easier to see than it is for you you notice any changes <laughs> yeah good. i notice changes in you too <laughs> 10. are we in a giant mirror that just reflects everything we are back to us yeah, we've already talked about that, haven't I we? I know, and that's what she said. She was like, "He just answered that." You knew it. Yeah, already, already answered that one. Right. Yes, you're the answer right. is yes. We are the you're you. Other people reflect you back, and when you're nice, you get nice back, and when you're just acting nice, you usually get this back. Kind of. You're still getting yourself back, which yeah. isn't nice. Yes. And that's why you get frustrated because you're you're still not nice. <laughs> yeah. But you think you're being nice. You think you are. Yeah. You, you confuse the acting with the actual being. Mm -hmm. But one of them is sincere and authentic. And the other one is you're just doing what you think you should do, what people expect of you. But right. that's not that's not necessarily who you are. So you need to be authentic. Be who you are and share that with people. And then if that doesn't work well, if you're being authentic creates a lot of trouble, then you need to change yourself. Then you need to say what's causing the trouble. All right, well, that is me, but I don't like it. I don't want that to be me. Yeah, I don't want that to be me. So now I have to change it. But you should be authentic. Because if you're not authentic, you'll never know who you are, where you're at, and where you are and, and what you need to work on. So just be who you are. Tell people what you think and how you feel. And then if it doesn't work well, you need to change. Maybe you need to, you know, you need to reconsider what, you know, what you should be. But don't just act it. Try to be it. All right, let's see. What haven't I said? I haven't said eight. What are some things that right brain people can do to help function better in a left brain world? Well, you know, it's hard being right brain in a left brain world. Um, our, <laughs> our culture, our culture is very left brain and our culture rewards left brain thinking. So if you are in a job that requires a lot of left brain thinking, you'll probably get paid more if you're in a job that requires right brain thinking. The, the left brain thinking is more highly valued by our culture. Um, it is having a, an intellect that is well developed and well honed and well practiced is seen as a really wonderful thing. But what the right brain people have is they have an intuition that is developed and honed, and they get a lot of things intuitively. And the left brain people really don't have much of an intuition. They think of an intuition as a, gu a guess. Oh, I'll, you know, I'll do a, a guess from the gut, you know, this will just be a, a guess. And they're most of the time they're not right. You know, their guesses are as wrong as often as they're right because they haven't really developed that intuitive side because they don't understand it and it isn't reliable and it isn't accurate. So they not even sure it exists. Whereas right brain people intuit a lot of things. They understand often how people feel, maybe not why they feel that way, but they understand how they feel. They can pick up on that. They can pick up on things that, that work and things that don't work. They can get ideas and knowing they just get a knowing of something. Oh, I just know that's true. Yeah. And so they live in a world that's full of knowledge. They know a lot of things, but they can't explain 
anything because they don't get it rationally through an explanation. They get intuitively and they just get it. But why? Why did you get that? Or how did you get that? And they go, mm, I don't know. I just know that's the way it is. So when you're right brain and in a left brain world, you probably need to not talk as much and listen more. <laughs> yeah, listen more. Because you'll find out that when you have a whole lot to say, people tend to think of you as, you know, an airhead, right? What do they call them? Space cadet. Uh, well, you're you trying know, to explain to them what's happening <laughs> and what, why, why yeah. you think the way you do. And then you, if you explain it more, then they get that confused look on their face. Right. And then they turn white. And then you just, <laughs> you just look and back away slowly. That's all you can yeah. do. <laughs> right. And the thing is, then they look at you and they jump to conclusions and they say, oh, She's really scatterbrained, or she doesn't understand <laughs> this, or uh, she just doesn't have a good grip of reality. And see, that's not true. Just because you're right brained doesn't mean you're an airhead or scatterbrained or don't have a grip on reality. It just means your grip on reality is mostly intuitive, not intellectual. The thing is, you know, and it should make right brain people feel better, is that a well developed, in intuitive side is actually more accurate and more reliable than an intellectual side, because it can get the answers that the intellect just cannot fathom. Right. It can understand things that an intellect will never understand. So it's actually has a bigger decision space and more information, but it takes a lot of time to hone that to where it's reliable and you can count on it. That takes a lot of experience and trial and error before you can count on it. So it kind of the bottom line is the right brain people really live in a larger reality. And that reality has a lot more dimension and depth to it than the left brain people. The left brain people tend to live in a narrow reality, a reality that's just defined by their rationality. And anything that doesn't fit in that rationality space is not important or you know they they toss that out but most of life lies outside of that rationality space and most people who feel that they are very logical they're not logical at all they just pretend to be logical they think they're, they think they're logical but the reason that they can't be logical is they don't have enough information Right. To be logical, you need a whole lot of information. You need all sorts of facts. Then you can look at all those facts and you can do a logical deduction. Given all these facts, then this is the answer. Well, most of the time, for a problem that isn't trivial, you know, for a bigger problem, a life changing problem, an important problem, you don't have a lot of facts. You know, who should you marry? How many children should you have? What kind of job should you, what kind of career should you go into? You don't have facts that say, oh, okay, here's all the facts and here's the answer. You know, it doesn't work that way. Life is not logical. So all the big things in life that are really life changers and things that are meaningful that, you know, put you down one path instead of another, those kinds of things only have intuitive answers. You can intuit whether that's a good thing to do or not a good thing to do. But you can't explain your result, but you can intuit it. So the left brain people pretend that they're logical. What they do is they take whatever experience they have and then they guess. So they take the facts they have and the experience they have, the interpretations that they have of everything. They take all their fears, they take, you know, all of that stuff there, and then they guess because they don't have enough information to really be logical, but they think they're logical. So the left brain has a problem in that it appears or they believe they're much more logical than they really are. Now they are rational most of the time. Rational means you make your best guess. It's a rational guess. You know, being logical means it's logic. If this, you know, then that, that's logic. Hardly anybody's logical about anything. It's too hard. <laughs> yeah, but we tend to be rational, but we think we're logical. 
oh. when we're when we're not. So left brain people then tend to get very arrogant because they tend to feel like they know. They know. They know. They feel like they know, but they don't understand is that those guesses that they're making have nothing to do with facts. That's all about their fears. It's about their ego. It's about all kinds of other things that mixed into their problem, but they feel like they're very rational. So they're hard to argue with because they have beliefs and attitudes they think they're right. and they think they're right. And they think they know, you see, whereas right brain people aren't that way. They're not as pigheaded. They're not as, uh, I've got the answer, period. And if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. They don't feel that way. They feel like, well, my intuition says it's probably like this. And they feel a certain amount of, you know, anywhere from, you know, 50 50 to maybe, maybe, uh, you know, 95 five, you know, One of these? it depends, you know, so, so some of, you know, it's, it's hardly ever just certainty. They're, no. they're, they're almost never certain about how anything's going to work out. But they've got intuition about maybe the next move or the next step or where it's going or where it's going to go. And then as they progress down that path, their intuition will search out and get a few more steps. So they kind of work their way as they go, but they don't tend to be arrogant about it. They tend to be more of, well, this is what I think is the best way to go now. And somebody says, well, why? You know, <laughs> I don't know, but this is what I think. This is what I feel is the best way to go. So that's just a totally different mind space than somebody who's very rational and says, well, this is the right way to go, period. And if we don't go that way, then you're wrong. I'm going to be mad. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'll be upset and I'm going to argue with you and I'm going to say, well, here's my arguments and here's my rationality. What's yours? And you won't have any and they'll have some. So they'll say, <laughs> so they'll say well, then we got to do it my way because my way is the rational way. But then what they'll find out is after they've lived with you, if this is like a spouse, <laughs> after they've lived with you for, you know, five or 10 years, they say, yeah, my wife, she's always right, damn it. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll understand that a lot of times, you know, the answer, and it turns yeah. out to be right, even though it takes them so many weeks or months to, to get there and figure it out. <laughs> they and figure it out. So they're trying. Yeah. So how do how do right brainers, you know, deal with this world? Well, like I say, they should listen a lot mm -hmm. because all the left brain people are going to want rationality. You know, they're going to want why. Why do you feel that way? Where did that come from? Where are your sources? And, <laughs> yeah, where's your sources? And, and right brain people don't have a whole lot of that to offer. So don't go there and you say, well, it's just a feeling I have. And if they just discount right. that because that's just a feeling. So that doesn't that doesn't count. You know, you'll have to put up with that because that's the way they are. That's the way they see the world. And they see that rationality is the only way to run their life. And they live their life out of their head. Everything is intellectual. Yes. And they miss a whole lot of life that's really significant that just goes right by them and they don't <laughs> even notice. No. That's just the way they're going to be. So you just have to let them be however they are, and they need to learn to just let the right brain people be however they are and realize that they have skills and talents and, and feelings that are often right. And you need to pay attention to those right brain people because they know things that uh, you don't know. They don't know how or they don't know why, but they're often right because they have honed that ability just through trial and error and experience, and they've gotten better at it. So we need to, the right brainers need to respect the lefts and the lefts need to respect the rights. And we all need to, you know, get along. And, you know, this is a, a thing, a guy, this was a long time ago, but a guy called me up once and he was asking me a question. You know, he had this new girlfriend and he had just gotten out of a divorce. He had found his new girlfriend and he had this problem in that he presented an argument to her and he was so certain that his argument was absolutely logical and had to be agreed to, but she wouldn't agree. She just wouldn't agree. And when he asked her why, 
She just couldn't explain it, but she wouldn't agree. And he called me up and he says, what can I do? I sort of like this girl, but I don't know that I could, you know, I don't know that I could be with her or live with her because she's irrational and I don't, you know, that bothers me. And I told him, I said, well, listen, which would you rather be? Would you rather be happy with a good woman that you love? Or would you rather be right? You can't be both. You can't be both. So if being right is so important to you that you would throw away what otherwise looks like a very good relationship, if being right is that important, well, that's unfortunate because that relationship is a whole lot more important than being right. Being right is just your ego and that's yeah. nothing, that's junk. That relationship has potential because he said the relationship was really, really great. It just had this one thing that, that was just terrible about it. And he got that. He said, oh, let's see, what would I rather be, right or have a good relationship with this woman? <laughs> hmm. Okay, he said, I think I'd rather have a relationship and not be right. All right. So I think he, he kind of learned that, that lesson because for him, it was a choice. Now, he couldn't be right all the time because he was he was very logical. He was an engineer. Oh. He couldn't couldn't be right all the time because it was going to ruin his relationship because he wasn't he was being. You know, what's the word? He was being uh, domineering. He was being demanding. Demanding. He was they being right. Yeah. So they, yeah. they want you to be right with them. <laughs> yes. But it was very important to him that he knew he was right and that she wouldn't agree. So obviously there was something wrong with her. She had a flaw. She couldn't see logic. She wasn't being she wasn't being agreeable. Some people aren't agreeable if they don't believe what you're saying. Yeah. So it's arrogance to it think is. that you know everybody has to be like you and agree with you. And if they don't agree with you, then they must be wrong. Because <laughs> definitely, wrong. whatever you think is right, or you wouldn't think oh. it. So everybody feels like they're right. So when you're with people, you have to <laughs> no. realize everybody thinks they're right yeah. for their own reasons. You think you're right because of this rationality, which really has a lot to do with your ego and your fear. And there's some other way, which that way also has to do with their you know, ego and with their fear. Right. And you just have to let all that go and say, well, OK, what's really important here? I know. Let's change the subject and talk about something that makes us both happy. <laughs> you know, that's you just have right to brain is going, he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you have to just, you know, realize what's important. It's not important to be right. That's just your ego wants to be right. And it's much better to get along with people. You know, it's just the same thing, not wanting, not running to correct people, but not also wanting to change them. Right. You know, not wanting to tell them what to do. It's all the same thing. Not trying to fix people. Because you know what's the right answer and you want to fix people who don't. Just because you're being generous and want to help them. Yes, well, it's not helping them at all. It's, it's annoying them is what it's doing. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what, what side of that issue you're on. So we're in a, you're, if whenever you're having an argument, as long as that argument is productive, people are listening and learning and sharing, then great, arguments are great things. But as soon as that argument becomes non-productive, it's time to quit. Time to just back off and let it be. Okay, we disagree on this. And leave it alone. Disagreeing's fine. Sometimes yeah. you can agree to disagree. Yeah, agree to disagree you and don't see this and the that's way. yeah, and that's fine. And just let it be. But don't get arrogant that I'm right, and if you don't agree with me, then there's something wrong with you. You see, that's arrogance. And that is what a lot of left brain people do. They feel very arrogant because they're very intellectual and they read a lot. They take in a lot. They remember a lot. They've got a lot of facts in their head mm -hmm. and they feel pretty certain about, you know, what they come up with. And they don't realize that their fear and their ego is a large part of that 
equation of where things are coming from. And then they get arrogant about it. That's what this guy was doing. It called me up. You know, he was just arrogant about being right. He needed her to say, yes, you're right. I see it now. And she wasn't going to say that. And I suspect even if she believed that she wasn't going to say that just because. <laughs> because the, he was being arrogant. Just because that's he was being fine. arrogant. No, no, no. Right. And that's the way she was going to deal with that arrogance was just to refuse to give into it.